Hey, it's Mike. It is Saturday morning. Weird for me to be doing a Saturday video. I've got to jam this one in. I was up at 4.15 this morning, saw that there was a new baseball card documentary out, and I had to watch it. I mean, when you're up at 4.15, what else are you going to do? Um, so this is called Behind the Card. It was done by Christopher Fitzgerald. This appears to be his first ever movie or anything. It's his first IMDb credit that I, that I could see uh, on his IMDb page. So first of all, what I'm going to say is that it's very, very professionally done. He did, um, everything looks amazing in this. Um, it seems to me though that Mr. Fitzgerald is not a collector. Maybe even doesn't even, isn't even familiar with the industry, just wanted to get into, uh, you know, what's happening in the industry. There was, there were some, some things that I, as a collector, was very interested in things. As soon as I started noticing things, I started taking notes. So I'm going to go through these notes. Uh, first of all, the Panini CEO said that every card today is serial numbered. I, I wasn't aware of this. That's news to me. Um, I'll, I'm going to have to look at some of my base cards and see where those serial numbers are. Um, there, there was a lot of this. Things that were said by people Fitzgerald was interviewing that was just never questioned. Uh, so um, PWCC was featured heavily. And uh, PW PWCC was very famously, a year ago, banned from eBay in a bid shilling scheme. And this was eBay's biggest sports card seller. Um, and they, PWCC just kind of laundered their reputation through this documentary. It was never mentioned. The bid shilling was never mentioned. This happened in 2021. And, and I, there's a lot here about the timing of this documentary that makes me think it was filmed early in 2021. And I'll talk about those. But that's fine. That's 18 months. And I understand not going back and doing follow-up interviews due to time and money. But put in a little a little blurb that says this was filmed prior to PWCC being banned from eBay for shill bidding. Seems to me, I'm not a documentarian, but it seems to me that you could do something like that. Uh, the, the PWCC guy, I think he was like the owner of PWCC maybe, or the CEO, said that serial numbered cards started in 1996. The first ones appeared in 1996. That's wrong. Uh, I believe that they came out in 92-ish. 93. And they were rare, for sure, but they were still kind of rare in 96, too. There weren't very many of them. Uh, somebody named Vegas Dave was heavily featured. This was all investors, so I haven't heard of any of these guys except for Jeff Wilson, but Vegas Dave is heavily featured. He's, uh, if, I don't know if he has a YouTube channel. He's pretty entertaining. Not somebody I would watch usually, but uh, he said that he doesn't believe in vintage. Those guys are dead. And he said, Mickey Mantle, that dude is dead. His cards aren't going to go up. He, they can't keep increasing in value. I'm paraphrasing. Paraphrasing, but that's basically what he said. It's pretty wild. Uh, Steve Aoki, who I also had never heard of before, uh, actually comes off really good in this. I, I don't know anything about him, so let me know in comments if, if he's no good. But he seems like an actual collector, and it was nice having some collectors, and I know he's friends with the Vegas Dave. He, he seemed like a good guy. I'm going to go through a couple things. First of all, there was a lot of HGA in this, and Aoki started the HGA talk saying that uh, he listed off the three grading companies that he trusted, and then said also HGA. I trust HGA. This was before HGA kind of plummeted, obviously. And then they, they go to the HGA owner, maybe? And interview him, and they talk a lot about HGA. Uh, Aoki also says, "If you do, you actually like card culture. If the values go up or down, it shouldn't matter. If you actually like card culture, uh, buy what you love." And I thought that was great. That was that's my philosophy as well. So it was good to hear that in a sea of investments and. This card went up 18x, and this card increased by 10x. And um, they were also in this conversation about talking about slabs. They 
uh, we're going through showing all the company slabs, PSA, BGS, HGA, and then they show a Beckett raw card review as if it's a slab. So it's little things that make me think that Fitzgerald doesn't know the card industry and didn't have anybody review it beforehand to say, hey, you know, this, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense here. Not a huge deal. They also had Josh Jacobs on, the running back for the Raiders. I don't know if he's still on the Raiders. I know he was at the time. And they said, Jeff Wilson said that his cards spiked 6x, I think he said, during an offseason. And they cut to Josh Jacobs and said, did you ever think your cards would be as valuable as Barry Sanders and Walter Payton's? And that's, that's just a really bad characterization of the value of those guys' cards. Then they show Vegas Dave burning a Michael Jordan raw 1986 Fleer sticker. And he says that he burned a quarter million dollar card, Michael Jordan rookie. That card raw was never worth anywhere near $250,000. I don't think it was ever near worth $250,000 in a PSA 10 slab. Maybe I'm mistaken about that part, but I really don't think so. Uh, it was raw. He burned it, and he made a huge deal out of it. Good publicity stunt, I guess. I don't know that he needs publicity. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's just one of those things where somebody should say, that's a raw card that's not worth a quarter of a million dollars. And it's not. it, it is in his rookie year, but it's not considered the Michael Jordan rookie. They also talk uh, a lot about, not a lot, but a little bit about fractional ownership. And they cut to an interview with Jeff Wilson where he says his favorite fractional ownership company is Dibs. And good for Jeff for saying that. But the documentarian should have said, hang on, Jeff owns Dibs. And we have to point this out. That's, that's journalism. When you're doing documentaries, you have to point out these, these little inconsistencies. Jeff Wilson his, his website says that he either is a co-founder or a heavy investor in Dibs. And Jeff, I don't think it's Jeff's responsibility in somebody else's documentary to say, I'm co-owner of my favorite. It's the documentarian's job to say, oh yeah, you own that one, right? Yes. Or put in a little blurb that says Jeff is co-founder of Dibs. They also talked about the NFT and blockchain, and it was right at the peak of NFT blockchain drama when they filmed this, it had to have been because it's, they're talking about how it's a, a big deal. And the, the founder of one of these blockchain companies said that they've been in it for 16 months since January of 2020, which would put this at April or May of 2021. So, you know, you're talking about 18 months and it's there, there was a lot of video inside target of people fighting over cards and stuff like that. And that, that era is gone. So it felt like this was not very timely. And maybe that's the challenge with documentaries. It's that uh, it should be, here is what was happening at this time, but the documentary was very much presented as this is what is happening right now in the industry. And that's just, that's not reality anymore, thankfully. Um, but yeah, there was just not really any little guy collectors. It would have been nice if they had interviewed like baseball collector Mike or John Mangini. I've got comments from Mangini coming in as I sit here filming this video. Uh, John Mangini, Sammy Thunder, D. Khan, these little guys who have YouTube channels. I don't mean to call you guys little, but you know the the collectors, the real collectors who uh, are are doing awesome things. Adam from Splendid Sports. Why not? talk to the little guys who are true hobbyists, who love collecting. And you guys, I'm sure you all think about the value of your cards. I know I do, but that's not the important thing. I'm not saying I have to, I need to 10X my collection in two years. Uh, I buy what I love. And I know that those guys do as well. Uh, so that, that that's all. Let me know what you think. I know you're gonna watch it. You should, it's entertaining, it's really well done. All right, I'll be back tomorrow with a card show video. Thanks for watching.